How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, New Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern, Saturday mornings with Jim Valley, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 Eastern, and it's Monday here on this show, and you know what that means? It means clearly I was gone on Friday, because my God, has a lot of stuff happened over the last couple of days, not the least of which is... Cody Rhodes won the Royal Rumble. And it's funny. Ah, we'll get into it after the break. But anyway, Cody won the Rumble, and he is not facing Roman Reigns at WrestleMania for the title. Instead, it is The Rock and Roman Reigns. And it's all people have been talking about this weekend. I'm sure in some ways they're thrilled. Although I refuse to believe, I absolutely refuse to believe, that their plan was to get The Rock booed out of every building that they showed this video to. I can't believe that that was their plan. But we're going to talk about that here today. We've got Raw tonight. Got a big Dynamite show coming up on Wednesday. Yesterday was an NXT pay-per-view, which we have to talk about. We got more on Vince McMahon. Rossi Ogawa, no longer employed by stardom. The company that he founded will tell you all about that. Plus, what people are saying about it, because there are definitely two sides to this story. We got the return of an AEW star after injury. And, of course, SmackDown. We can talk about the rest of the SmackDown show and Collision. And pretty much whatever else is on your mind. If we have time today, you can text us, 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. I'm F4W online at gmail.com, F4W online, threads, Instagram, and Cameo, and at Brian Alvarez on the X. Back in a moment with more Wrestling Observer Live. For you, what were some of the interviews that were your absolute favorite? You're like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm interviewing this person. <laughs> Any favorite like moments that you had? Because you got some really fun moments with the talent yes. uh, when you're a backstage interviewer. Well, dating back, I'm sure you saw it on digital, on social, talking about the way. Do you remember Austin Theory and yes. Hurtwell, Johnny Gargano, Candice Gargano, Candice LeRae? Like, it, the stuff that we would do for social media interviews for YouTube that was like it, it was almost a challenge to see who could laugh make each other laugh first because we would start the whole thing normal and i wouldn't even ask john i wouldn't even tell johnny hey i'm gonna ask you this question we would just start it and then he would go off on a tangent and then i would go back with something that he didn't expect me to say and we just had this dynamic relationship on camera with all of the weight which was so fun um and then you look at like Javier Bernal, when I was doing the little back and forth thing with him. And that was a lot of ad lib. I think that a lot of people get the misconception that it's all scripted. I mean, to an extent, you know what you're going to ask, you know what your question is, you know what you need to get out of the interview. But I think how you give a nonverbal or how you respond in a moment whenever maybe so something somebody says something that you weren't expecting like how you respond to that is really what grabs the audience's attention because they feel the uh, this authenticity behind it they feel the genuinity of like oh okay i can feel the emotion behind this interview so i love doing this stuff with javier because i think it was my first time that people were like oh mackenzie has a personality <laughs> Mackenzie, like, oh, I, this is who she is. Got it. Cool. Okay. You do have a little wit behind you. And then Grayson Waller, like the dynamic that we had between our interviews or when we were talking on camera was just, it was natural because how he would respond is how I would respond. And we just had that natural banter. What was it like working with Shawn Michaels? He's awesome. He's awesome. I don't know if you got the opportunity to meet him. I did actually. NXT. He's so nice. <laughs> yeah. And he's, and he's like, not in, I mean, he's intimidating, of course, because he's Shawn Michaels, but he's just a lovable guy. Like he's just there to listen and to help, to help you and to help the company. And, um, he, my husband, like he is Shawn's biggest fan. If you say, who's your two biggest wrestling fans? Like, and I always joke with Shawn. I'm like, if somebody said, okay, to Vic, you have to choose your wife or you have to choose Shawn Michaels. I'd be gone. I'd be out. It would. It, I, I don't know. I don't hold a candle to you. And then you'd be like, no. You, so we always had a running joke about that. Um, 
but Sean's great. It was, it meant so much to see such the kind words that he had to say about me in the press conference. Um, I loved working with him. I am endlessly thankful for him and the experiences I had with him at NXT. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. I should have taken today off. Mm. Yeah. Why is that? You yeah. want more news to break? Uh, yeah, so I'm not around for it. <laughs> All right, so if you weren't, uh, if you've been living under a rock, which actually I have friends who I think do live under rocks, and uh, and they still were texting me this weekend. About The Rock. And we have never, ever talked wrestling, these people that were texting me. But they've all heard that wrestling fans, this is what they said, why are wrestling fans mad at The Rock? Well, here's what happened. If this is what they're hearing about pro wrestling right now, I want you to talk to your friends at a little bit of a deeper level, okay? Promise me that. So, this Friday was supposed to be a face-to-face with Roman and Cody. And Roman comes down to the ring. And he does this big speech where he buries Seth Rollins. Talks about how he's got a secondary title. Should be called the loser bracket title. Said, look at Seth's name, no pop. (laughs) Says, this guy talks about being a workhorse, he can't even walk. And he says, yeah, I work less than you. I make ten times more than you. I still make ten times more than you. Do you value Seth money or tribal chief money, he says. Cody, you're an idiot. You don't care about money. And listen, I'm not going to come here and beg like that other guy. If you can, you can either be the best number two, or you can take a crack at number one again. So Cody comes out, place goes nuts. He says he wants a private conversation with Roman, so the bloodline leaves. And he says, "I talked to friends, family, legends. You cheated me," he said. Seth made a lot of great points, but I do not agree when he called this the Hollywood title. That is the belt, he says, that Bruno held. The belt that was put in my father's hands at MSG and taken away. I still want that title, he says. Let me ask you, what is finishing the story? I heard you say all of this was yours. The ring, the canvas, all these fans. He says, is finishing the story taking that title from you? Or is it taking everything from you? Let me make this clear. I want that title. I'm moving my own goalpost. I am coming for it. I am coming for you, but not at WrestleMania. I took counsel, and one of the people I talked to you know very well. And, I mean, to be fair, this this these people in this building on SmackDown, my God, they went nuts for the surprise return of The Rock. And The Rock got in the ring. He shook Cody's hand, they hugged, and Cody left. And they show the long shot of Cody in the aisle, and he looks back, and he nods. And then The Rock and Roman Reigns had a stare down, and the crowd chanted something that got bleeped, and uh, that was the end of the show. Now, there's a lot we can talk about here. And then Cody Rhodes walked to the back and had himself a nice cocktail. Here's the thing, okay? It's not just it's not just that Cody won the Royal Rumble and then stepped aside for the rock, okay? You realize that during the entire lead up to the Royal Rumble, they spent weeks talking about how not only did he want to win the Rumble, but he was the first guy in a generation to win two Rumbles back-to-back. And he did. He won two Rumbles back-to-back. And then he had to step away. Now, this from the front page of WrestlingObserver.com comes from Observer Radio with Dave. 
The deal for The Rock to face Roman Reigns at WrestleMania was made weeks before Cody Rhodes won the Rumble. The Rock was appointed to the TKO Board of Directors last month. Part of the deal, he was given full ownership of The Rock name, as well as $30 million in company stock. Dave noted The Rock wrestling Reigns at WrestleMania was part of the agreement. When he made the deal on January 3rd to come in, wrestling Roman at WrestleMania was part of the deal. Why Cody won the Rumble is a question I cannot answer because nobody will answer it for me. Outside of Nick Khan, Ari Emanuel, very few people, if any, were made aware that a deal had been made for Rock to face Reigns at WrestleMania. The belief backstage at the Royal Rumble was that it would be Rhodes versus Reigns. Now, of course, here's the thing with wrestling today. This is why I wish I hadn't been here today. We don't know what's going on, okay? And a lot of you think you know what's going on, but we don't know what's going on, okay? A lot of you, I've noticed on the chat here, because you don't like WWE and you don't like Triple H, you think that this is the plan from day one, to have Cody win knowing he wasn't going to go there and do this. That might be the case. It also might not be the case. It is possible that nobody knew until a couple of days ago. Okay? Now, here's another thing. No, you guys don't get it. The deal was made, and it said very clearly here, outside of Nick Khan and Ari Emanuel, very few people, if any, were aware that this deal had been made. So we know, well, this is what we know. We know Rock, Ari Emanuel, and Nick Khan. I know that people are going to go nuts and go, oh, here you go again, Brian. But listen, the fact of the matter is, we don't know if Cody knew, and we don't know if Triple H knew. We just don't. So until we know, I don't know, man. Now, here's the other thing. This is what we also, and this is another thing that people have decided is true, but we actually don't know. They have decided that this must have been done to take heat off the Vince McMahon story and the allegations. Okay? Wayne washing is what it is. I do not believe that at all. Okay? I do a little bit. No, I'm going to tell you why. Okay, good. I think that the timing has less to do with Vince and more to do with they need to make this decision before this coming Sunday. Because this Sunday is the Super Bowl. Okay? Okay. And what they're going to do on the Super Bowl, which is going to be watched by 10 billion people, is they're having all of the WWE stars, not everyone in the entire roster, but they're having everybody down there, and they're going to be asking all the players, who do you think is going to win at WrestleMania? This is their big promotion for WrestleMania this year. And they're not going to go on Sunday and go, who do you think is going to win, Rock or or, or Roman Reigns or Cody? And then after they do all of this promotion on the Super Bowl, then announce on the following SmackDown, you know what, actually that Cody guy's not in the match. It's going to be The Rock. They want to ask about The Rock and Roman Reigns. This had to be done prior to Sunday. Now, are they probably happy that everybody is talking about this and not Vince? I'm sure they're thrilled. Brian? But I do not believe that that is why this was done at this time. Brian? Yeah. What day did Dave say that all of this started rolling into effect? It was January 3rd. No, he said that's when the agreement was made. Okay, so right with there. With The out. Rock, right there, Ari, okay. Stop there. and Nick Khan. You don't, okay, that's all I need to know. So you would figure then in December, at, at, the very, at the very least, in December, this was being talked about then, right? I mean, I'm sure they were negotiating, sure. I just, it is, it's something else. It really is something else. And it would be kind of like just the same thing continuing to happen under a new regime where a decision is made by somebody corporately that affects creative, that you're going into your second biggest event of the year, the thing that is going to kickstart you into your biggest event of the year, where you're going to be going to Las Vegas and asking National Football League players, who do you think's going to win? Why then? Why then with Cody at the Royal Rumble, other than to say, 
Well, he's won two in a row, but this whole you you gave everybody a year on this and, and people gave you grace and you have now gone on with this and it looked like it was going to be him and then you pull that away. And not only do you pull that away on SmackDown, you completely emasculate Seth Rollins, the title, and Cody Rhodes all in one fell swoop with the promos that Roman laid out there and the way that the whole thing went. I mean, I got a lot more questions about a lot of this stuff, too, but I'm sure we'll get into it as the show goes on. Back in a moment, Observer Live. You're clear. Green Hill. Hello. He's escaped. Do you know which way he was headed? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Shoulders. been here. Straight jacket. You're getting close. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sabrabibi, also WrestlingObserver.com. So anyway, following the show on Friday, when the crowd went nuts for this guy, well, there was the rest of the weekend. So first off, all weekend on Twitter. And man, these people were mean. This was not just like hashtag we want Cody or whatever. There were people saying very, very bad things about Roman and The Rock wishing them death. I mean, we're talking like people were out of their minds. And one would think, well, you know, that's Twitter. It's a bunch of idiots. Like, who cares? That's not the real world. But in fact, they did run multiple house shows this weekend, and they showed the video on the big screen during the house shows, 
and The Rock was booed. Like, every time they showed the video, they booed like crazy. And then they had Ava on NXT doing an announcement on uh, Sunday. She got booed. And then they showed a, a graphic on the screen for the WrestleMania press conference coming up on Thursday with The Rock front and center, and he got booed out of the building. Now, there was also a couple of signs, a couple of pro Cody signs at the NXT show which were not brought by fans. So it's very clear that they figure, you know what? These fans are going to be behind Cody more than ever. They are going to try to make this something, to make Cody a bigger babyface star than ever. But everybody talking, you know, Gewurz, all this 4D chess stuff they're talking about, you're telling me, you're telling me that your idea of 4D chess is the rock is going to come back for his final match at WrestleMania against a guy that people want to see beaten more than anybody else who is a top heel, and they want him booed? The Rock wants to be booed? They want the match booed? That's their plan? I think they misjudged the reaction to The Rock. (laughs) Well, you know what? It's not uh, like they haven't um, misjudged the reaction to The Rock before you know, and Roman Reigns. Remember when Rock held up Roman Reigns' arm at Royal Rumble and everybody was pissed off about that? Do you remember what city that was in? Do you remember the look on the Rock's face when they yeah, booed? Yeah. Yeah, he was do surprised. Remember, do you remember what city that was? No. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Let me tell you something. That is a, you want to talk about ingovernabilis there or whatever, the, the ungovernables. You know, that that's a place where you're not going to be able to control the crowd. So... They got a lot of work to do. And yes, when Rock goes out, he is going to be cheered wildly. You know, the pop for the Rock is going to be there. But it'll be interesting to see what the reactions are throughout the match. I'll be interested to see at this media event how media is treated and how media treats the entire spectacle. And oh, we're going to find out, all right. Which media is there? Because Oh, you'll only, see which media is going to be there. Not only in The Rock is The Rock going to be facing off against Roman Reigns, but now that he's on the board of directors, I would have a separate set of questions, you know, related to that situation. And again, Dwayne washing, they're just is a lot of that going on and for everybody that is feeding into putting up hashtags of justice for cody or justice for roman i mean at this point in time i mean i get it it is wrestling it is entertainment for a lot of people and that's all of it it is but it's like yeah no it's it's just dumb to me and a little creepy it it, it really is well they are having a wrestlemania 40 kickoff event In Vegas, that will be this coming Thursday. You going? No, I'm not going. But we we may have we may have people there, you know? Oh, oh. Like who? Media events being held at the T Mobile Mm. Arena in Las Vegas. Open to the public at no charge. Seven Eastern Four Pacific streaming on Peacock. Michael Cole and Pat McAfee hosting the event. What am I doing at four Pacific on Wednesday? Is that Wednesday? Thursday. Pacific on Thursday. I gotta pick up Paisley. I can have someone do that. I can't wait to watch this one. <laughs> so now, hey, well, you got the app. You can have it on in the car there. Just don't, just don't. I look walk at it while you're driving. Kidding me? Oh, you walk. It's perfect then. So yeah, that's the. Uh... Well, that's the latest on Rock and Roman. <laughs> I think we can move on to the next story here. You seem like you got more to say. You We're gonna find to out more it. tonight because we got a Raw show with Cody, old Cody. Going to be facing Shinsuke Nakamura in a bull rope match. <laughs> Just randomly announced this weekend. Sure. Cody well, and been Shinsuke. been doing those on the house shows. In a bull rope match. Yeah. Then we've got Gunther celebrating his 600 days as champion. <laughs> Did it at the Garden. Oh, God, that's what they're going to play up. Man, my dad, the king of the bull rope match. Your dad wouldn't have given away a title match, though. Yeah. Cody. We've got uh, Kabuki Warriors versus Katana Chance and Caden Carter. Ah. The Miz versus JD. Akira Tozawa and Maxine versus Ivar and Valhalla. <laughs> so, well. And we've got DIY, The Creeds, Imperium, and New Day. Winning team gets Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate. Number one contenders match on SmackDown. Give me The Creeds. We've also, we've also got uh, NXT Tuesday, Lexus King, Riley Osborne, Axiom and Nathan Frazier versus Edris and Malik. 
with the fake Thea Hale and the celebration <laughs> of Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin winning the Dusty Cup. We'll talk more what about that later. What is Brinley Reese's gimmick? Like an insane Denise Austin? Like what, like She's what is, a I know it's motivational reference, speaker who also is a wrestler and a gymnast so and a cosplayer a, for Thea Hale. That's who she is. Motivational gymnast. Then we've got uh, Dynamite Wednesday. Tony Khan has a big announcement, which I Not believe major. will be the announcement of uh, Boston Not and huge. the beginning of the build for uh, Mercedes debuting. We have got Swerve versus Hangman Page. Winner gets a shot at Revolution. We've got Big Bill and Ricky Starks versus Sting and Darby for the tag titles. Jericho and Takeshita. Moxley Danielson and Claudio versus Mystico, Volador, and Hechicero. And uh, unranked Red Velvet's getting that uh, title eliminator against Tony Storm. Deanna will be on workout. commentary. No, it's an eliminator match. <laughs> it is an eliminator. That collision was pretty good. Hey, the wrestling was really good. Yeah. So then, we've got this story with Stardom. So here's what's going on. Stardom founder Rossi Ogawa, no longer employed, as their parent company announced Sunday, they have terminated his contract. They stated the reason would be because they learned he had, quote, poached many Stardom players and staff. Since 2019, the statement said, our company has entered into a contract with Rossi Ogawa, the founder of Stardom, has appointed him as an executive producer, outsourced work related to stardom. However, we would like to inform you that we have come to know that he has poached many stardom players and staff, and we have decided to cancel his contract. We apologize for any inconvenience this may cause you, etc., etc. Ogawa posted Sunday he was told of his firing after stardom's Saturday night event. He said, quote, the truth of the matter might be told someday, and that, quote, he is worried about the players right now. So uh, here's here's what we know and don't know. We don't know for sure that he's going to start his own promotion, but the belief is that he's probably going to be starting his own promotion. He is not going to WWE. There have been rumors that he was going to WWE with Julia. We've been told by multiple sources that is not true. Tony Khan was celebrating this, and my belief is that Tony Khan believes that he did attempt to poach stardom players and staff and that many issues that AEW had with stardom were because of Rossi Ogawa. Rossi's side claims that, in fact, most of these problems that I have been blamed for were actually problems that Bushi Road, they were the ones that, you know, denied this or denied that and i was essentially a scapegoat as the person who founded and was running stardom their side rossi's side is claiming we have not poached anybody uh, we poach no one you know if if i end up going somewhere you know the people going with me are not under contract and you know if people's contracts expire and they go with me then they go with me so there are definitely two sides here. I have heard from people who are pro oh, Rossi. No, there's, more, there's more than that. I have Ryan. heard from people uh, <laughs> definitely anti Rossi, and uh, that's the that's the latest as of right now. Couple sideways with Rossi, you know. It, there are multiple stories in this, and there are multiple things that are can be true, and there are multiple ways to look at it depending on which way you're looking at it from. Rossi Ogawa has not been happy there for quite some time. He has made that publicly clear. He also has had a relationship with WWE in the past. If you remember the whole Mae Young classic, Io Sky, Kyrie Sane, Dakota Kai, um, who am I forgetting? Tony, uh, Tony Storm, Nixon Newell uh, was going on stardom tours. And then she was gobbled up by NXT UK when that started. Shayna Baszler, I believe, was still a regular in stardom. I don't know if she was actually over full time yet. He's been open to working with WWE. And obviously, with Julia seeming as if there is no other place she was going to go other than WWE, continues to to add into that, especially because she has defended Rossi and 
what, just a couple of months ago, talked about with all the issues going on, they were taking what Rossi has created and started to flush it down the drain. There are other people in that company who are very loyal to Rossi as well, too. So there, this is going to be really interesting here. They have now, for anything you could say about their losses in the past or any of that other stuff, Rossi Ogawa had been there. And now he's not going to be. And not only is he not going to be, you have two people there who have no experience whatsoever in running a wrestling company. Back in a moment, Observer Live. When you think of your time four years on NXT, you were able to show people who you were, what kind of interviewer you were, and all of that. But the goal is eventually to get to Raw and SmackDown. Did you ever have any conversation surrounding that? Well, I think everybody wants to get to Raw and SmackDown, right? Like, I think that's kind of the goal in all of professional wrestling. I don't know if everyone feels the way feels that same way, but I think majority of people would want to get to Raw and SmackDown and be on the road and have those WWE moments. Um, I, of course, wanted that. I, of course, wanted at some point to get to Raw and SmackDown. But I also felt like NXT kind of became my home and people really loved me on NXT. Um, from everyone in the company it just they they just kept saying like i remember andy hartwell said something to me one time she's like when you think about nxt you're the best fit of an interviewer that i've ever seen for nxt and i don't know why i don't know why that is exactly or if people can put a finger on what that is exactly about me and nxt that made sense but it just made sense and then once my husband started doing commentary for nxt then it was like we were kind of this kind of this package deal with nxt too so I was able to tap into that and really create my own <clears throat> story within, X, in, within NXT in my own home, which I loved. Um, but it's hard to say that I wouldn't have ever wanted to go to Raw and SmackDown. I think part of the reason why you fit in with NXT was, well, your interview style, but also the fact that because you had been there, you knew everybody. And so it didn't feel like, oh, just new girl coming in and let's just rehearse these lines. Instead, sure. it felt because you were there, you knew the people already, you knew their stories, you knew what was happening. And I think that familiarity is mm -hmm. what really helped you, uh, you know, shine on, on NXT. And it was unique that I got to learn and work with new talent. You think about from the black and gold to NXT 2.0, that was really, um, nobody can, I don't know if many people can say that they went from black and gold into the NXT 2.0 into where we are now. And it was fun getting to work with new talent and new superstars such as Braun Breaker and Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams and Roxanne Perez even, and them on the rise because I was able to work with the likes of Johnny and Candace and Tommaso and Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly on Disputed Era, and then Raquel, and then you go to a whole new era of what was 2.0 to where it was an adjustment, but it was also really cool um, and fun. You have to evolve. And so it was able. I was able to evolve with all these talent. And now I get to see them go off and succeed and see what Carmelo is doing on SmackDown right now and Dragon Lee and like all these. It's, it's really exciting because I was able to connect with all of these talent throughout their journey and be a crucial part of their journey, I felt. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. And yes, of course, it's possible. Rossi's going to start another group. Bunch of former stardom talent will go over there, and he'll have a working relationship with WWE. That's probably the most likely scenario. Absolutely. And that's the only way he's going to survive over there, in my opinion. This is going to be the third group now that he has started up. And Bushi Road and WWE were both in the market to buy stardom. It ended up being he sold it to Bushi Road. So who else is out there if you're going to have a lifeline and money and to be able to survive and to be able to do what you want to do, hooking up with WWE is probably going to be your best bet right now. Obviously, it's not going to be Tony Khan and AEW. We see that. So WWE is going to be the best option. And 
look, there are people who are not happy on the New Japan side of things with Bushi Road. We've seen that play out repeatedly, and that's why we have Hiroshi Tanahashi as the president of that company. We know there are women who are still unhappy in stardom, even with the changes that have been made up top in that organization as well. So I'm sure, you know, there are going to be people looking at this from just the Rossi side saying, well, look what he's working against. But it also should be noted that Rossi has had problems in the past, too, when he left All Japan Women's. Now, granted, he had worked with the Matsunaga family for years, so it probably was time for him to go. But the, when the Arceon promotion started up, everything looked really nice, you know, at first with Aja Kong and some of the other people. That completely collapsed, and there were women that were very unhappy with the way that whole thing played out. There are probably women who have no idea. They've still never been told that technically that that promotion has closed down. But it whole, the whole thing fell apart. Aja Kong sued him. Ayako Hamada left, and she ended up, you know, after that, ended up in Impact. I think that's the, the path she ended up taking there. But he starts up this promotion and then we have these issues. So there's probably, again, there's a lot of things that are going to be said about this and be, you know, and let's see how much makes it out into the media. We're already seeing them fight back and forth with the release that they put out. And then what Dave had up on the website about, you know, Rossi's side of the story. All right. A couple of notes from the NXT show last night. We did the full review on Brian and Vinny yesterday, but the Dusty Cup was won by Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin, my favorite WWE team. They beat Carmelo and Trick after Carmelo allegedly took a bullet for Trick, got pinned by a spear. They will be celebrating their win this coming Tuesday night. Former what are you CZW yelling about here? Wait, hold on. Time what are you yelling about here on the forum? Here, what are, don't, what are you... don't do that. If I'm yelling on the forum, it's because I don't want to yell here on the show. It's the same stupid Why thing you about... Why bring up this crap all the time on the show taking place? So you want me to bring chat. it up again? What is Guys, in, in all caps I was talking? it's okay if Okada goes to NXT for a Jesus. little while. He needs to move to this country. He needs to get settled. I don't care if he has worked here before. He would be moving here. And it's okay. Shinsuke Nakamura started NXT. Asuka started NXT. Kyrie started in NXT. Dozens of people have started in NXT. It's okay. Now, Dijak and Joe Gacy. Joe Gacy. You know he's better doing hardcore matches? It's true. Him and Dijak had a good one. And, uh, and then he lost. But you can't keep a good hardcore man down. He'll be back. We had the women of Chase U selling their calendars. Sold out at the arena and online. You cannot get a Women of Chase U calendar right now. So they actually probably are going to legitimately make six figures on these calendars. So if you want one, get your uh, pre-order in now. And we've got uh, Tony D and Stax and Adriana Rizzo versus OTM and Jada Parker. Match is fine. It's all right. Adriana and, and Jada need a lot of work. Jada's actually had a fair number of matches on uh, Level Up, but uh, they got a ways to go. Tony D's great. Him and Stax should be on the main roster. OTM's got, uh, you know, they got uh, potential. Tony D just made a big comeback, hit all his moves, and won. Didn't even go back and forth, so they retained the titles. We had uh, Roxanne and Lyra for the NXT women's title. So this actually, up to this point, was the best match on the show. It started out with just, you know, grappling and everything, and then all of a sudden... Roxanne hits her finish. They're both down. And old Lola Vice decides, I got a great idea. I'm going to cash in now in the middle of this match. I'm going to come down to the ring. I'm going to give the briefcase to the referee. The referee is going to give the briefcase to the timekeeper. The timekeeper is going to alert the ring announcer. The ring announcer is going to walk up those steps in her high heels, take an hour to get into the ring. She is going to dramatically announce it is now a three-way. She is then going to exit the ring in her high heels, slowly, carefully walk down the steps, and then the other women are fine. So she jumps in there. It's now just a regular three-way. They go back and forth. This damn Tatum Paxley interferes. The crowd hates it. It's no DQ now because it's a three-way. And then Lola just gets pinned. Hell of a cash-in, Lola. Better luck next time. It's a good match, though. 
Then we had Dragon Lee and Obafemi. I also thought this was good. Not great or anything, but for having 23 matches, this Obafemi is one of their better big giant new dudes. He looks great. The fans love him. He's he's very good in terms of throwing people, but them landing safely. Dragon Lee did a great job. And Oba powerbombed him, pinned him clean in the middle, retained the North American title. So I guess Dragon can go back to the main roster now and get the hell out of here. Then we had uh, Trick Williams, Ilya Dragunov for the NXT title. And uh, Carmella's at ringside. And they did have a couple of spots where, you know, Carmelo accidentally chop-blocked him when he was shoved. And then later, the referee took a bump and Carmelo was sent outside and Trick hit his knee. Crowd counted to 10. No referee. Second ref runs in. Ilya kicks out. Ref, you suck chance. And then uh, Ilya, he's in the corner down. And Trick goes for his big Trick knee. And they go at each other. And it was like... Was it the Dukes of Hazard? What was that old show where like the two cars went like this and exploded in the air? I remember this when I was a kid. The Dukes of Hazard opening there, isn't it? Is that what it was? Yeah, Something that's what like these that. two guys did. They exploded into pieces. And then I think Elia's head and torso fell onto Trick's mangled body and got the pin. <laughs> and so Carmelo is so sad afterwards. This match was great, by the way. They beat the hell out of each other. They're both bleeding everywhere. I think there was blood in every match on this show, by the way. Well, and, and with Dragunov, too, I mean, it started early. He got drop kicked in the face by Trick, and I'm not saying that he did it on purpose, but I'm saying Ilya Dragunov uh, made sure that Trick knew he was going to be there and popped him right in the mouth, too, which opened up that cut from earlier. Yeah, I think that uh, uh, Trick drop kicked him right in the nose a minute in is what yeah. happened. But anyway, Carmel looks sad afterwards, and he gets in the ring, and he says, Trick, man, we were we were so close tonight. It's always going to be the two of us, and you're my boy. And then he chop blocks him from behind, and he beats his ass with a chair. He's pounding on him with the chair. You can hear Trick on the mat, the, the mat going, one more time. He's trying to get more sympathy. <laughs> and then the fans are chanting really mean things. And so as an NXT fan, I am waiting to see what Trick has to say on Tuesday. Because here's the deal. Somebody attacked Trick. Carmelo has insisted that it was not him. Okay? If, in fact, he actually did attack Trick, why did he take the bullet for him in the opening match? Why did he not cost him the title? Why did he root him on and try to and then turn on him after he had been defeated? The only explanation is it turns out that Carmelo didn't attack him. Carmelo has been his friend the entire time. But what finally caused Carmelo to snap is that, you know what? He said, you're, you're concentrating too much on that world title. You need to be thinking about this Dusty Cup. And at the end of the show last week, it was very clear Trick was not concerned about the Dusty Cup. He was only concerned about the title. And they went in for that Dusty Cup, and they lost. But Carmelo, who was his friend, thought, you know what? We lost that, but maybe we can leave and he can be the champion. And then when he screwed up there and lost that match, he cost them everything. Carmelo could take no more and he turned on the guy. Yeah. So I think we'll see what happens. We'll see what they what they do on Tuesday. But there you go. I, always, I thought there was a way you could tell this story, even though it would probably be too soap opera like by the end where it's not Carmelo that attacked him and he could make his way up to the main roster and they could go out actually as friends. But makes more sense this way from a wrestling point of view to have them build up to a big match before Melo goes up to the main roster and Trick stays in NXT where he needs to be, you know, for right now and continue on. I know a lot of people are upset he didn't get that his moment there, but don't worry, there's going to be plenty of time for that. And I think his moment is really going to start when he defeats Carmelo and he puts his name up into the bleachers and puts it on a jersey and does all that sort of stuff so i think trick williams has come along amazingly it's great to see where he's at right now but i think i think they're going to do this in a way where we do find out 
it was not Carmelo that actually attacked Trick. And you're going to do all this stuff, but at some point they're going to come back and do a union again. And whoever that person was that did jump Trick, that's probably going to be a lot of his 2024 before he gets another shot at Ilya and takes that title. So the other big uh, story on SmackDown was Bailey had to choose her opponent for WrestleMania. And uh, this was, like, not subtle at all. Right before she goes out, there's a clip backstage. There's a, there's a uh, segment backstage. Damage Control standing around. And they're all laughing about Bailey. They're making fun of her. And they, they walk off laughing. And Bailey's watching. And so she goes down to the ring. Damage Control is there. And, uh, of course, she's facing the hard cam. This is why it's important to know how to face the hard cam. She's doing her thing. She's facing the hard cam. And behind her, you know, damage control, they're, they're making fun of her, and they're laughing. They're, and she turns around, and they're, like, all calm. And uh, finally, she does this promo and says, you know, I could choose Rhea Ripley or I could pick a different fight. Sometimes it's personal. Sometimes you find out the people you thought were your friends, well, you were wrong. And she says something in Japanese to reveal that she actually speaks a language in which they've been speaking about her behind her back. And she says, why do you guys talk about me constantly behind my back? All I wanted was to take us to the top to WrestleMania. I wanted to do it together, but EO, you turned your back on me. And they don't even wait. They attack her. They're beating her down. She grabs a pipe. They all flee. Bailey announces she will be facing EO at WrestleMania. And you know who was not there? Who? Dakota Kai. Mm-hmm. Who also speaks Japanese. Hmm. I think Dakota's turning babyface with Bailey. And the storyline will be that she is the one who taught Bailey Japanese to learn what these women were saying behind her back. Or she could turn on her as well. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> I think I think Dakota should be back somewhat soon. Is is uh is what I think, but I'm not sure. So anyway, that was uh, that was a good segment right there. There were uh, a lot of good matches on uh, Collision. Brian Keith, Eddie Kingston was great. Brian Danielson, Hetchy Sarah was great. And the main event with Nick and Christian and Killswitch versus FTR and Daniel Garcia. That match was great. Thank God there's only a minute left so I don't have to talk about these rankings. <laughs> I see I already got a lot of heat on those. Well, let me tell you something else that was great with all of this greatness that took place. I actually watched the Gabe Kid Hanari match from the February 4th New Japan show. Pretty damn great. Man, there's a lot of greatness. We'll talk more about that greatness after the break. I'll be right back, Observer Live. Next match on tonight's Portland Wrestling Card, Ed Moondog Moretti versus beautiful Brian Alvarez. This match is being brought to you in part by Tom Peterson. What an amazing match we just had. And Tony Kazina and Damon Scythe tore it down. I do not know, Mike Rogers, glad to have you back. LC, I, I couldn't take much more of them, Mike, glad to have you here. Moondog Ed Moretti, Brian Alvarez, beautiful Brian Alvarez in the ring. I have never seen Tony Kazina that upset. Oh, that was unbelievable. And uh, yeah, I've never seen him that upset either. Um, uh, and I'm telling you, if, if you don't want to be upset, I guess you just look over there and see Miss Rent to Own. Auto, yeah, yeah, Miss Rent to Own Auto. There she is with beautiful Brian Alvarez. And she was none too happy last week when Brian Alvarez was pinned by the grappler. One, two, three in the middle of the ring. I'll tell you, fans, Ed Moretti, veteran 24 years, locking up with beautiful Brian Alvarez, drives a knee into the midsection, whips up across the ropes, off he comes up, another knee, really drives him in. Ed Moretti, Oklahoma roll there, he's got him down. There's a pin, one, two, no, almost a three count. A move you haven't seen, Miss Marito Onato not looking very happy there with beautiful Brian Alvarez and the effort that he's putting forth tonight. But fans, coming up next in our main event, the Suicide Kings versus Havoc and Mac. Again, double count out last week. Those two teams want to settle the score. Mike Rogers, 
I'm not sure the arena's big enough to hold them. Oh, it, you know, they're gonna take off right where they left off last week. And uh, yeah, I don't know if this arena can hold the action that's, that we're in store for in that main event. Action like this each and every Saturday night, WB32, 11 p.m., Portland Wrestling. Ed Moretti, the veteran in the ring, whips him into the rope. Drop kick for a big man, really got up high. There's a pin, one, two, hugs the leg. Third man in the ring, Mark Watson, almost with a three count. You don't see agility like that very often from a man of that size. No, you know, he's a big man. There's no doubt about that. And here we've seen two moves now that uh, usually would be considered little man moves. The Oklahoma roll and a big drop kick. And I know Ed Moretti was very upset last week getting pinned in the ring by Robbie Lentz, a rookie. It hasn't happened to Ed in a long time. And that was quite the upset, absolutely. Looking to get back on track here. Whips him into the ropes. Oh my gosh, did he hit hard. Upside down into the turnbuckle, off he comes. Big back body drop. Beautiful Brian Alvarez up and down. Miss Rinton really, I think she's looking for someone else already. Splash off the ropes, nobody home. There's the agility, Brian Alvarez with the Oklahoma roll himself, one. God damn, you see that? I just pinned Ed Moretti on that, on that match. Yeah, you I have won before. Uh, it's been a while. With that uh, Oklahoma roll. Not a stampede. I remember we were in the back and... Uh, <laughs> he was like, we're trying to come up with a finishing. He goes, you know, I did an Oklahoma roll. And I said, uh, no. He goes, let's go try it. And so we got in the ring and kind of figured out how to do it. I'm not sure if that was actually an Oklahoma roll, but it's close enough. And then, and then he goes, and maybe early on I'll try one on you. And I was like, what? <laughs> I said, okay, whatever. And so if you watched it, he in fact tried an Oklahoma roll on me. And it didn't work at all. <laughs> but I still managed to get my shoulders down for two before I kicked out. Oh, the good old days. Mm-hmm. All righty. I wish we could go back to that. Actually, I don't wish we could go back to that because there were too many old crazy wrestling fans then, and there are apparently a lot of crazy wrestling fans Oh, you don't say? Right now. Should I read this, uh, this tweet from Ava? Can y'all just leave me out of this FFS? I'm busy running a show. Death threats over a situation I have nothing to do with. Please tell me people aren't threatening Ava. Yeah. I mean, come on. Is that what well, we've uh, descended to here? Yeah, stupid people online. Probably a lot of kids in, you know, that don't think that people will look into this. They're going to look into things like this, and it's just... It's so ridiculous. It's sad. It's sad in any aspect of anything, but especially the stupid world of professional wrestling. Oh, stop. Wrestling. This is what Cody fans are like. Get out of here. This is stupid. Stop I got to get out of here. You know what I'm going to go do? I'm going to go have some teriyaki and go not think about wrestling. Until exactly. 2 Pacific, 5 Eastern, we'll be joined by Filthy Tom Lawler and a guest host. Adam's joining us here today on the Filthy Tom Show. It's going to be a lot Summers? of fun. Yeah, that's 2 Pacific, 5 Eastern. Check it out live, video.f4wonline.com, wrestlingobserver.com. We'll talk to you next time, Wrestling Observer Live.